cents. They go by 15, then 10, then 1. European shit. Thank you. Thank you. we've been showing. Beer as beer instead of beer. say that this is an update on the first break, but unfortunately I just busted from the 25k high roller um, in a really interesting string of events, I think. So I'm just going to run through the hands uh, because I went from 40k to 100k to out in exactly an orbit, um, and I think that's probably pretty rare in tournament poker. Um, the very first hand starts with me under the gun with Red Kings at about 40,000 to begin the hand. We're playing 200, 400 with a 50 ante. I decide to raise to 1100 and it folds around to now Pharrell in the small, who has roughly 32,000, I believe. He three bets me to 4,500. Uh, and now I have a decision between four betting and four. I like the idea of keep, keeping his range wide here. Um, I know him to be rather aggressive, so I think he's probably three betting too often from this spot. Uh, just having too many hands and though that would kind of incentivize me to want to be four betting here as well um, I don't really need too many of my strongest hands included in there. So uh, I kind of want to play the spot in the vacuum scenario where I'm looking to get a full double um, Especially given the pace of this tournament being relatively fast. I like to flat and the board comes down King 9-6 with the 9-6 of hearts and I have red kings um, he continues for 6,800, and now that leaves him with about 20,000 behind. Um, I think shoving here is totally fine, but given that I have the King of Heart blocker as well, it just really reduces the amount of hands he can call with. Uh, I mean, it would pretty much have him needing a combo draw of some sort, or Ace King plus. I elect to just flat, hoping that he will uh, follow through with his turn bluff, should he have any amount of equity. Say he has like you know, a hand like aces with the ace of hearts. I mean, that's not really a bluff, but like, say he possesses the ace of hearts in some capacity um, and is shoving hard turns, this is just like the most profitable way for me to play this hand. Um, the turn is an offsuit seven, completing eight ten for a straight. He now checks, and I mean, at this point, the board texture has kind of gotten such where he either has equity or he doesn't. 
the fact that he checks makes me think that he has a hand of showdown value or a give up, which means that I'm kind of just in a position now to shove. Uh, I don't think he's going to turn his give ups into river barrel bluffs. So uh, I like to just go ahead and stick all in. He beats me in with, of course, the absolute nuts somehow. Uh, he has 10-8 of hearts for the turn nut straight and a flush draw. Uh, I get very lucky and I river a nine. Um, filling me up and taking my stack up to about 85k after the hand. Um, the very next hand, uh, I'm in the big blind with Ace Jack and Clubs. A strong reg that I didn't recognize opens from the cutoff. He opens to 1,000 and 2 4. I make it 3,000 with Ace Jack and Clubs. And he calls. Flop is 9 8 4 Rainbow with one club. Um, I decide to check. This is kind of a tricky spot. Um, the reason why I'm checking is because I feel like I don't really fold out a lot. I think he's just going to be incentivized to be floating here a lot. And the cards that improve my equity kind of put me in a weird double barrel spot because they're also going to kind of merge with the, the hands that are already made for him as well as his folks. And I'm going to have to make a lot of strange turn decisions. So I like to check. Uh, and very likely call at least one. Um, trying to improve my equity and then playing ladder streets better than, than I am this street currently, I guess. Uh, he decides to bet 3,000 into seven, and I like to continue through a call. Uh, the turn is the ace of spades, bringing the ace nine of spades for backdoor flush drop. Uh, I check, and he bets 8,000 into roughly 12. This made me want to fold. <laughs> um, this is a strange card for him to be sizing up on, I guess. But from a combination standpoint, it's like there's only really two combos of Ace-9 suited left. One combo of Ace-8, and I believe two combos of Ace-4 because the four clubs was out. Um, so there aren't that many two pair combos. Uh, there are three com or two combos of 9-8 suited. Um, and then if he's playing all pocket pairs pre, or opening all pocket pairs pre, which he very likely is, then there's nine combos or sets. Um, but the problem is that I don't see that many natural bluffs. I mean, when he bets flop, I anticipate his entire range to be incentivized to triple barrel. So he should have hands like Queen Jack, Jack 10, uh, Queen 10, hands along those lines. But the problem is I block some of those with the Jack and uh, the ace is probably his absolute worst bluff card to continue with, even with a range that's instead of to triple go. So for him sizing up here, I know I'm gonna have to make two pretty big calls. Unfortunately, like I'm near the top of my range. So I'm probably best just taking a call fold line, uh, unimproved, but uh, I like to go call call on three of diamond river. And he shows me a set of fours. No surprise, uh, I think that line is probably more value heavy than bluff heavy. And uh, the mistake I made was paying off river for sure. Literally the next hand dealt to me, I'm now in the small blind with two tens. And um, an American player I didn't recognize opens uh, from below jack, or I guess, sorry, from the from the cutoff. Uh, folds to me in the small, and I make it 3,000 with two tens. Um, looking back, I wish I'd flatted. Uh, I just look so spewy at this point, um, and for me to just pick up like three strong hands like this in a row, plus three betting tens from the small blind, it's, it's something that I can very much work into my mix uh, between three betting and flatting. Um, I wouldn't have minded the big blind coming in in this scenario, so uh, I think a flat would probably serve me better. But I like the three bet the three K. He flats. Or it is seven six five rainbow. I check, he bets 3,000, I call, sorry, 4,000, I call, turn is another 7, check, check, river is an offsuit 4, completing any 8x for a straight. I check, planning to call a reasonably sized bet, and he bets 35,000 into now um, 14k. Maybe I'm getting exploited here. Um, in my experience, uh, especially from guys who I think probably aren't that balanced, this is just insanely nutted trying to get paid off by a weird bluff catching range of like 8x and some overpairs. 
I don't think I was bluffed here. I think I would be making a massive mistake by calling. So I just surrendered. The next hand dealt to me is eight seven of clubs on the button. Um, folds to Christian Harder in the cutoff. He makes it a thousand to go. I flat and Kitty Cow squeezes out of the small blind to 4K. Christian folds, uh, comes back to me on the button. I elect to peel. Flop is queen 6-5, six, 6-5 five, six, five with clubs. So I flop a straight flush down. She C bets for 5,500, I believe. Um, and, you know, the equity in my hand justifies that I could raise here, but uh, I think that she's gonna see this spot pretty transparently in the sense that her one pair plus hands very comfortably just play for stacks. I know that seems a little ludicrous at the 200, 400 level to be playing a 200 big line pot with like ace queen plus here, but I just don't have enough combinations of two pair plus type hands to really be threatening her one pairs. And these high rollers are relatively turbo-ish in the sense that the first six levels are 40 minutes. Uh, chips kind of fly pretty quickly. And also, most importantly, I don't block the queen of clubs. So she can simply just have hands that have me in relatively bad shape, like king queen of clubs, king jack of clubs, or sorry, uh, queen jack of clubs, ace queen of clubs, um, etc. And even ace king of clubs, like I just have no full equity or pressure against. Uh, I like to continue through a call. Turn, unfortunately, doesn't change the texture at all. It's an offsuit deuce. She bets 9,000. I'm pretty much just restricted to realizing my equity at this point. I call again. River is uh, an offsuit three, or sorry, an offsuit 10. Um, and she bets 13.5, simply for value. Um, you know, she does have some bluffs here, I'm sure. Perhaps a king jack of clubs type of holding, but um, not enough that I can be a hero and shove through for just over a main race. Um, Sure enough, the next hand I'm dealt were two queens. And in the meantime, uh, Niall's seat has been filled by a Chinese businessman um, who, the very first hand he was dealt in, he uh, attempted to make an illegal raise. So um, ultimately, it, it, it wasn't a big deal, but basically like he was very uncertain of like what was going on. It was quite clear of that. So, uh, he opens under the gun, and I'm in the now cutoff with two queens. He makes it a thousand, I make it four thousand. Um, just pretty confident that like he's not a folder. And I have thirty-seven thousand effective now. He decides to continue through a call. Um, flop is six deuce deuce rainbow. He checks. I bet seven thousand. He calls, and now we have about 27,000 remaining on the turn. Turn is an offsuit five, uh, Badoogie now. He checks, and I think the vast majority of his range here are over pairs to the board, and I can't fathom him folding any of them. So, I mean, if he has a hand as weak as sevens, maybe even as weak as fours, I think I'm just getting stacks here, and you know, my tournament life does matter a little bit, I guess, but I just don't think I can pass on value in these spots. So I like to shove for about one and a half X pot, and he of course beats me in with the old ace deuce offsuit, sending me to the rail. Um, we do get one re-entry into this event, but uh, I didn't really plan for it to be quite frank. I'm just going to pass on re-entering, um, kind of like reset. Enjoy Melbourne Day today. Uh, get to explore a little bit of the city with me as I guess it's a big block party for the next 24 hours. Um, and then yeah, I'm gonna have like the next three, four days off. We're gonna go explore uh, all around Australia. My birthday is actually Monday, so we're gonna see what kind of shenanigans I can get into there. And then the main event, it's, uh, it's gonna be Tuesday. It's one of the best events that I can imagine. Uh, so I'm gonna do everything I can in the meantime to try to get prepared for that. Hopefully we'll make a deep run for everybody.
monologue about Australia in the last episode, so let's hear how it's going so far. Well, played three events. I made zero day twos. It's rained a lot. Jenna got gallstones, so she's been in the hospital for three days. And uh, I had effectively two birthdays here, which was strange. What do you mean? Well, I had my Australian birthday. Yeah. And then 24 hours later, the rest of the world caught up. So I got bombarded with birthday nonsense for two days in a row. Which is particularly bad for me because I run poorly on my birthday and I think it carried through to my American birthday. That makes sense actually. Yeah. You should have played the day before your birthday. I know, I, I fucked up. Tell us about the main. There's nothing to tell. There's stuff to tell because I have a lot to tell. I literally played no hands for 10 hours and then busted Ace King vs. King. Do you think you should ask how I did? No. <laughs> I know. But honestly, I'm really upset because <laughs> it's been a hell of a trip. I've probably slept five hours in five days. We land. Our good friend Jen has an emergency and we're in the hospital for four days. And so I ate dinner in the hospital every night here. Except for last night where I decided to meet Kirk and some guys for dinner at the casino. And I stumbled Wait, upon this tournament that was starting at 6 p.m., which was event number 15. You see, the 1K PLO no limit round by round. So I had no money, I had to ask Burke for money. And as he gave it to me, I said, okay, do you want 1%? And he snapped, said, no. A free 1%. For giving me the money. Nothing in this world is free. It was free. It was nice. You had the money on you. I was able to play. So. <laughs> so you got drunk. We didn't get that drunk yet. This isn't where it starts. We did get a little bit of dinner. We decided to go register. And we ended up bagging, which I politely asked Berkey to show, which he didn't because he was a pussy and was afraid. We bagged. Um, we came back with 35 today. We had some really tough spots against a party poker pro, Dimitri, who wouldn't even look at me by the end of the night because I got it in bad every time against him. Puts that shit in the middle. Um, but we ended up getting 14, which yeah. isn't too bad. Hmm. Congratulations. I of it. I'm sorry. Congrats on your cash. You now have the largest cash in the house. And I didn't even come here for poker. Do you want to eat while you tell the story? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have 139 behind. Yeah. This is for you, man. <laughs>